In the first gas lift film, we became familiar with the well model that will be used throughout this series of films. We also learned what is meant by the term pressure gradient and that pressure gradients change as well conditions change. In the second film, we will study three well conditions. First, the well flowing. Second, the well dying and dead. Third, unloading the well. The well flowing. In the first condition, we see the well flowing and producing 850 barrels of liquid per day. and 200 MCF of formation gas per day, or at a 235 to 1 gas-liquid ratio. Two conditions have been satisfied to make this well flow. First, the flowing bottom hole pressure of 600 PSI is less than the static pressure of 720 PSI, thereby causing liquid to flow from the formation into the well bore. And second, the flowing bottom hole pressure of 600 PSI is high enough to overcome both the weight of the fluids in the tubing column to surface and the flowing wellhead pressure of 180 PSI. Hence the liquid and gas flow from the perforations up the tubing to the surface. The well will continue to flow so long as these conditions exist. We can plot these conditions and get the plot you see here. The red curve represents the vertical pressure gradient in this flowing well under these conditions. But let's look at what happens when some of these conditions change and production declines or ceases. The well dying and dead. In a naturally flowing well, the most common changes that occur to cause a production decline are First, a drop in formation pressure, and second, an increase in the vertical flowing pressure gradient. In the first case, when a decline in formation pressure occurs, such as you see on the lower right of the graph, the pressure difference that is forcing fluid from the formation into the well bore will decrease, and consequently, less liquid will enter the well bore. This pressure decline can continue until it causes the well to die. In the second case, an increase in the vertical pressure gradient, as shown by the blue curve, could be caused by a number of things, including an increase in the water to oil ratio, a lower gas to liquid ratio, or a combination of these two conditions. For example, let's look at what happens when we reduce the gas to liquid ratio. When we reduce the formation gas from 200 to 150 MCF per day, we see that all well conditions change. Flowing bottom hole pressure increases from 600 to 640 PSI. Liquid production has decreased from 850 barrels per day to 700 barrels per day. Further reductions in formation gas will result in still lower liquid production and the well will die. To illustrate, if the formation gas is further reduced from 200 to 120 MCF per day, we note the following changes. A slow but steady loading up of the well. The flowing bottom hole pressure is rising. Slugs of liquid no longer reach the surface. Gas now breaks through the liquid without lifting the liquid. The vertical velocity is too low to carry liquid up to the surface, and the well is dead. Again, referring to our graph, the yellow curve represents the static pressure gradient for the dead well. Let's look at these two curves. The black arrow points to the static bottom hole pressure for the dead well, 
which is greater than the bottom hole pressure for the flowing well, as indicated by the green arrow. The difference between these two pressures, as shown by the bracket, is known as drawdown. In this case, the drawdown is 120 PSI. Drawdown is related to formation productivity and is the pressure difference that causes liquid to flow from the formation into the well bore. We have seen how a well dies. Now let's see how we unload a dead well to cause it to flow. Unloading the well. Here we see the well in a dead condition as would occur if it had been killed by loading the casing with salt water. The bottom two gas lift valves are open due to the static head exerted by the simulated salt water. Before the well can be returned to production, it must first be unloaded, that is, all the salt water used to kill the well must be lifted out of the hole and formation liquid produced. Our input gas pressure at the surface is 635 PSI. By opening the adjustable needle valve slowly, we admit input gas into the casing, and the gas pressure in the casing slowly increases. As this increase occurs, we see the casing liquid level falling and the tubing liquid level rising. These changes are caused by the gas pressure forcing the casing liquid through the open gas lift valves into the tubing. The gas pressure continues to rise slowly until it has displaced the casing liquid down to the 1300 foot level, uncovering gas lift valve number one, which lets gas into the tubing string. Note that the bottom hole pressure is 1,040 PSI. The input gas volume can now be increased, which further decreases the pressure gradient in the tubing above the gas lift valve number one. Note that bottom hole pressure has declined from 1,040 PSI due to this decreased pressure gradient but also note that the bottom hole pressure is still higher than the static pressure of 720 PSI, and that as a result, the well is not producing any formation liquid. All the liquid being produced by this top valve is coming from the casing tubing annulus. This top valve is an unloading valve and is used only during the unloading operation. It is designed to close soon after the next lower valve is uncovered and the casing pressure drops. At gas lift valve number one, the difference between the tubing pressure of 320 PSI and the casing gas pressure of 540 PSI is 220 PSI. This pressure difference is sufficient to move the liquid from the casing through the lower gas lift valves into the tubing. And this movement continues until the gas moves down the casing to valve number two at 1,990 feet. As gas lift valve number two is uncovered, it lets gas into the tubing. With two valves now momentarily passing gas, the casing pressure declines from 540 to 510 PSI, causing the upper valve at 1300 feet to close. With gas now moving through the number two valve, the pressure gradient in the tubing above the 1,990 foot depth is decreased. Note that the bottom hole pressure has been reduced to 620 PSI, which is 100 PSI below the 720 PSI static pressure. So we have developed a drawdown of 100 PSI 
which causes formation liquid to be produced. The difference between the tubing and casing pressure at the number two valve depth is 120 psi and is sufficient to displace the liquid from the casing through the number three gas lift valve into the tubing. The number three valve is now uncovered and is permitting gas to enter the tubing. The bottom hole pressure has been further reduced from 620 to 500 psi. With gas now passing through the number two and the number three valves, the casing pressure declines, allowing number two valve to close. The well is now fully unloaded and is producing at a rate of 1,000 barrels per day. Now, let's summarize what we have discussed. We have learned that the pressure in the well bore opposite the perforations must satisfy two conditions if the well is to flow. First, it must be less than the static pressure. And second, it must be great enough to lift the fluid in the tubing to the surface. When these conditions are not met, a well dies. And finally, we have demonstrated how gas lift valves are used to unload dead wells by reducing the vertical pressure gradient in the tubing to a value which will allow the well to produce.